All right. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming to this session. If I don't live in the U.S., how do I become a significant contributor to OpenStack? So you heard from Mark this morning that OpenStack is becoming more and more diverse uh, community, which is great news. And um, like for this summit, we actually see a lot of uh, attendees coming from Europe and Asia PAC, um, probably more than um, people coming from U.S. So um, and then. Um, since we have a small audience and I like to keep it interactive, first of all, I'd like to introduce our panelists and I'd like to thank them for their time. And first of all, I'd like to introduce Ye Lu. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> yeah. And Aya. And Roland. And Takashi san. All right. And um, so um, my name is Annie Lai. I'm based in US, but originally I'm from APAC. And um, let me just introduce myself a little bit first and then the panelists can introduce themselves. And I've been involved in OpenStack for a little bit over a year. And um, I sit on OpenStack board. I'm a Huawei school membership representative. And um, I also participate in various work groups like product work groups, enterprise work groups. Recently there's an interoperability challenge work groups. So um, I used to be a coder, but um, I stopped coding. <laughs> And I started doing, uh, you know, more of uh, evangelism, you know, marketing strategy work, and so I do get involved in more of, uh, you know, work at the work group level and at the board level, and that's my involvement in OpenStack community. And now I'd like to ask the panelists to introduce themselves, and uh, please introduce yourself and let the audience know where you're from, which region you're from, how long have you been with the community, OpenStack community, and your role in the community. And last, please tell a joke about sure. your region, okay? Or a funny, funny story. Oh yeah, it has to be, it has to be really funny, yeah. It's hard for me. Not, <laughs> not Donald Trump funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ye Lu, why don't you go ahead? Uh, hi, hi everyone. I'm uh, Ye Lu from China. I work for Kuna. Uh, and I have involved in OpenStack for like four years since 2012. And I was, I, I am the ambassador in China. Uh, and um, my company uh, used the OpenStack for like since the very early stage, since Grizzly. And a funny joke? I don't think so. Uh, but I, I can tell some numbers uh, about OpenStack in China. Like uh, we got the super user award in this morning, the China Mobile, and we got uh, here is the specific some numbers of OpenStack status in China. We got the second uh, the the second uh, market uh, in the world, uh, just uh, a little bit less than the U.S. Maybe I don't I, I think so. And yeah. the code uh, code contribution and the node deployed in OpenStack and all the second to all the second in the world uh, just a little bit less than the US yeah that's the facts thank you uh, Roland yeah I'm, oh, yeah. I'm just yeah uh, I'm Roland Chan I'm uh, based in Australia I work for Aptera which is a uh, an OpenStack services uh, company um, I guess a funny thing, well, not a funny thing about me, but uh, I used to be a, a, a technical person and, and run a software development team. Um, but I had to uh, back away from being technical because my staff wouldn't let me touch anything anymore. It was, uh, it was getting too dangerous. Um, you can only blow up so many servers before, um, before your staff step in and, and force you to really concentrate on being management. Okay, Aya. So, hi everyone, my name is Eyal, I'm from uh, Huawei's Israeli Research Center, I'm the cloud CTO there. I've been running, um, building and running uh, OpenStack engineering teams for more than four years now, uh, working on various projects such as Cinder, Swift, Glance, Neutron, and also projects we initiated ourselves like Dragonflow and uh, um, Carver. Um, no joke, but um, um, an interesting tidbit about uh, Israel. So most um, Israeli Jews have uh, dietary restrictions. We call it uh, eating kosher. And uh, in Israel, the stamp, the glue on the postal stamps is actually kosher. <gasps> right? so. 
Uh, my name is Takashi from NEC Corporation Japan, and I'm also very early stage, from a very early stage, uh, managing the community team of NEC. Uh, NEC is now uh, about 20 uh, engineers are uh, mainly contributing work in the, to the OpenStack, and uh, now uh, uh, we are ranking up inside the top 10. So that uh, I'm the uh, there are um, many times coming to the OpenStack Summit uh, from very early, uh, but uh, this time, uh, from last week, I have some cold, so uh, I cannot drink alcohol these two or three days. So that's very clear, and that's uh, very understandable for this t t tomorrow's <laughs> keynote. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, panelists. And I just want to say the reason I invited these four um, panelists is because they actually, um, I think they're doing a very good job being really uh, integrated into the community. And so, um, for example, I work, I, I work with Yet Lu on the China Day event, and she was pretty much the glue that glued everyone together, and she knew the community. She actually knew the DNA of the community, and so that really helped. And then um, Roland is um, sitting on the OpenStack board for a few years already, and he always has really good ideas at the board level, and um, people really respect him at the board. And Aya is also, um, has been involved in OpenStack for a long time. In fact, he has uh, a team of really good people, and they can really do good projects, and, um, and their projects always get accepted by Big Ten, you know, be a, accepted as a Big Ten project by TC. So he really knows the trick. <laughs> and then um, Takashi-san is the NEC's Gold Membership Representative, and NEC is also a very big contributor in OpenStack, and um, so Takashi-san is very, also very much involved at the board level. So hopefully we can all pick up some tips from the panelists. And before I start, I'd like to find out about the audience. Um, I want to know where you are from. Can you, uh, can you raise your hand uh, for people who are from Europe here? Good. And Asia Pac? Latin America? Oh, great. We see people from Latin America. Oh, wow, good. Is that a soccer shirt? It looks like a soccer shirt. And uh, how about the rest? Africa? Antarctica? Australia? Asia Pac. Asia Pac, oh, that's right. Well, we're <laughs> not going there. <laughs> okay, great. So we have, uh, so, um, so I'm really glad to see OpenStack is so diverse. And I think that actually makes OpenStack very unique because of the, its diversity. And more and more, we're seeing you know, co-contributions coming from um, countries, regions outside of US. However, we still face that challenge um, as someone who does not live in the you know, US because OpenStack came from US, right? It's very, the original you know, members and original you know, group of developers are from US. And they are like the you know, old guards there. And as somebody new or somebody who is outside of US, and I feel like we all face a little bit challenge, in, at least in the beginning, you know, understanding the community and trying to you know, really get integrated. And so I would like to um, kind of explore this topic and hopefully we can all you know, learn from each other and then also give, you know, um, maybe give the foundation some ideas of how we can really modify and add some you know, kind of uh, work groups or anything like that to or make some changes to make OpenStack a lot more um, you know, accessible, the community more accessible to newcomers and to people who, are else, who live outside of the US. Okay, my first question uh, for the panel is, you know, describe the common challenges that, you know, from, I mean, probably not you because you have gone through that hurdle, but from the people that you know, that when they try to get involved in OpenStack and what are the challenges that the reasons why they don't feel they are fully integrated into the OpenStack community or they cannot become the significant, you know, contributor or the leader, one of the leaders in the OpenStack community who would like to start. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for for the developers in China, maybe the main problem is also the connection between the global developers and the local developers. Uh, the one reason is the language or the time or other problems. But 
Uh, another one is the local requirements, the local needs for the OpenStack. Maybe the you know the business models is different than the U.S. Then the architecture can be uh, vary from from the models in the U.S. But how can we pass the needs to the foundation at, or, or to the uh, tech committee? This is a main challenge for us to do. And we are still trying to figure out, as in Huawei and Intel, they have uh, hold the box marsh and the app Hexen twice a year. Uh, it kind of like build a connection or a bridge to the local people and the global people. Uh, but I don't think that's enough to, mm -hmm. you know, to pass the needs. Uh, I think there is still a long way to go. And another challenge I want to tell is that the, uh, the, the challenge from inside. Actually, I'm not working for you know, an OpenStack company. Uh, it just focus on OpenStack. We are a, a travel agent company. Uh, as my company name, Kuna, we are not OpenStack startups or OpenStack companies. Uh, uh, so it's really hard for me to you know, to balance the marketplace. Uh, some companies in, in China, they are trying to, you know, do some wrong PRs on OpenStax branding. So it's really hard for me to, for me to balance them and to uh, try not to hurt the com community for the other startups, the small startups from the big ones, something, some challenge like that. Yeah, okay. Next, Roy. Sure. Um, time zones are obviously a, a huge problem. It's, it's something um, that I run into all the time, trying to attend a, a board meeting at four in the morning isn't always um, a lot of fun. Um, uh, and I think if we're talking about participating with an existing, uh, say, a, a development team in the US that's, that's predominantly made up of people in the US, then you know, that's obviously going to be a huge challenge. You, you will... Um, lose a lot of sleep and, and that's kind of unfortunate I think um, um, but sort of unavoidable I mean if the if the majority of the team is is in a time zone that's a long way from you there's there's really not a, a lot you can do you will need to, to spend time interacting with them in, in real time um, I think an important thing is to try and make that interaction as, as um, efficient and, and clear as possible um, and, and we're just talking about teamwork here, and, and an important part of, of having a, a functioning team is that the, the team members um, can relate to each other and, and, and know each other reasonably well. And, and personally, I find um, trying to communicate effectively with someone that I've never met um, before over IRC is difficult because you don't um, you don't have a feel for their personality, you don't have a feel for um, you know, the way that they express themselves, particular, I guess, idioms or something. Um, and so I, I, I prefer to do a lot of communication, um, long-form communication like meetings as opposed to just writing notes. I, I prefer to do that over a different medium than IRC. Uh, I prefer to talk mm -hmm. to people, um, even um, if possible to, to use video because you do, um, you do pick up a lot more non-verbal signals that, that make communication clearer and, and, and uh, I think more efficient. Um, I know there's been some, a lot of discussion in the community about um, deviating away from sort of a, I guess a common um, use of IRC. I don't think that's, I think it's, it's sort of norm, IRC is the, the norm, it's, it's kind of the lowest common denominator, it's, it's, it's kind of available regardless of what you're doing, it doesn't require any special licensing, but, but I, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily the right way to, to communicate for all, all reasons, so, um, yeah, I think that's that. W it, it's important to get to know the people that you're working with. The summits are great for this, so it's good to see people coming from from all over the world to these to these summits and maybe getting to know people that they're they're working with as contributors. Um, but when you're joining uh, a new um, a new group, uh, I think uh, something that that we could do is uh, find a way to provide some sort of orientation to the to the to a new member, a new contributor. Um, and get and you know introduce them over something that's a little more interactive um, and a little more human, I guess, than than I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah? Sure. So, mm -hmm. I definitely agree with Roland. I think communication is uh, the key point. Mm -hmm. um, 
beyond the language barrier, which is difficult for non-U.S. Uh, citizens uh, to begin with, um, many new contributors, and I'm focusing on engineers, right, sending patches. So they attribute uh, malice when they get reviewed. They try to send a patch, and in order to get a patch uh, accepted, mm -hmm. you need to go through dozens of patch sets. You need to revise it again and again, and at some point, new uh, newcomers to the community think, okay, the reviewers just politically mm -hmm. don't want these patches. They are doing this uh, deliberately. They're against me, etc. And it's very difficult to get engineers to realize, no, look, fo focus only on the technical side, right? They're not doing this on purpose. This is the way it goes, right? Mm -hmm. And you just need to bear through it until your patches get accepted, until the person on the other side gets to know your coding style, until they get to know that you actually know what you're technically doing, until you build a relationship and they start trusting your mm -hmm. code more so they do less uh, meticulous reviews, things like that. Um, so this initial period takes time and a lot of patience on mm -hmm. both sides. Yep. Uh, and I think that's a, a big uh, block for many newcomers and, and many people drop out on the way because they, they can't stand it. They're used to writing a patch in closed source, getting it uh, reviewed yeah. once, and uh, it's merged. Right. And doesn't work like that way. Yeah. Yeah, I, also com I also comment about the communications uh, from Japanese or many engineers cannot speak English very well. So or there are some the first barrier is in English, and the second barrier is our time difference between the U.S. and uh, some other uh, meeting, so uh, uh, For instance, uh, many IRC meetings are held from our time at midnight. So uh, there is uh, not impossible, but uh, some um, engineer is uh, some. This time is a uh, private time for for them, and uh, uh, from a company side, uh, the or a manager uh, that can force to them to uh, attend the midnight even midnight IRC meeting from the uh, that that is your work. That that's a very uh, complex problem between uh, and uh, and uh, from my side uh, that uh, that is not a. Uh, uh, Specific problem outside the U.S., but uh, motivating the uh, motivating the engineer to becoming uh, uh, more uh, open to the open communities, uh, mm -hmm. saying the opinions or saying the uh, their uh, uh, targeting architecture or their use cases. So, uh, in many uh, Japanese en engineers are our uh, for uh, uh, something like uh, some shy people. Shy, yeah. yeah. So there are there. Are, Kind of impossible to say us uh, uh, opinion to right. uh, uh, some uh, native English speakers. Right. <laughs> that is very difficult to say. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, some um, motivated engineer to say that uh, some failure or uh, uh, some um, mistake is, is acceptable for us. Yeah. And uh, don't and some um, from many engineers are. Uh, thinking about the contributing to the community, also contributing to uh, some company's business, but that is not uh, so equal. Not not equal in the community. There are so, uh, uh, some. Um, I, I'm not, uh, mainly saying that to the, especially young engineers uh, focusing on the community work, not thinking about the business, but not thinking about the users. Users are important, but uh, my company's business is. Uh, business oriented, yeah. 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 That is very important for okay. us to, to create in the, 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 some uh, significant engineers, right. contributors to the communities. Yeah. So I'd like to summarize. I mean, so far we focus on the challenges, right? And I can see the number one issue is communication, the language. And um, the number two issue is tools, right? And, you know, IRC and that kind of stuff. And the third issue is time zone, right? It's really hard to for people who live outside of the US time zone to really, you know, to, to accommodate the time zones which are more um, easier for the US um, community members. And the number four thing is, uh, is culture, you know, culture difference. And I'd like to open up to the audience. Is there any other challenge that you are facing that are, have not been discussed here? Just you can shout it out and I can repeat to everyone. 
Is there any other challenges besides the ones we just covered? Okay, if not, um, so for the next uh, 10 minutes or so, I would like to um, focus on the solutions, how we can, you know, find solutions, let's brainstorm. Maybe some of us can take those suggestions to the you know, various work groups and then see how we can implement them just so at least we can you know, make it easier. And the number one issue is language communication, right? And um, you know, I have a joke. We actually share one common language. Does anybody know the answer? Doesn't matter where you live. In OpenStack, huh? Python. <laughs> right? We share that language, right? So, uh, but there's some truth to it, right? Because, you know, we're all writing in the same language. And um, so, so what do you think? I mean, language is not some, a special word for Huawei, a Chinese company, right? And I know we have a lot of smart PhDs and, you know, developers. And, um, but the thing is, and if you ask them to read the code, they understand totally. But then, you know, sometimes they have issues communicating with um, some developers in U.S. And so I'm just wondering, and it's not, the language is not something they can fix overnight, you know, and, um, but then we don't want to use the language as a barrier. We want to see how, as a community, we can still empower, enable all those, you know, um, non, non, um, no, all those non-English speaking people to, you know, to be integrated into the community easier. Does anybody have any solution? I don't have good solutions for this, right? But I can tell you what we've been doing in, uh, in Huawei to try to mitigate this problem. So actually my team in Israel is kind of a bridge between China and the US, both from time zone perspective and from language perspective. Um, Culturally, we have a lot of uh, commonalities with China, um, mm -hmm. uh, and it's easy for us to communicate. Also, we go and uh, have lots of face-to-face -face meetings, which always make things uh, easier. Um, and what we've been doing, actually, is we've been sitting with engineers in, in China and, and trying to understand what their problems are and then communicate them back more effectively to uh, people uh, in the community with whom we've already built relationships. Right. Um, so. In Huawei, we act as kind of a bridge, but this is not a, not a global solution, right? This is not a, a, a good right. solution. It's working for us locally. Um, but it's, I, actually, yeah. I do think it is a pretty good solution for companies, you know. I mean, most of you have, you know, worked for a company, right? And, and you do have a team of people who contribute to OpenStack. And I find it actually very common that for non-US companies, and generally they do have a few people who are more fluent in English and who actually communicate with the community a lot more. So these people can be the bridge, right? And get the information and um, from the community, from various work groups, from various projects, and then communicate back to their, um, their developers who don't feel comfortable communicating English that much. So that's one option. And um, personally, I think there's another option. Well, another option that I think that has been working pretty well is what Yet Lu talked about earlier. Um, in China, uh, we, Huawei and Intel, we have hosted four hackathon events. Um, and we do you know, t hackathon twice a year. And we get all these Chinese developers come in Right, together, so from various vendors come in, and then um, and then we you know teach them certain things, and then you know ask them to fix certain bugs and give them some specs and stuff, and you know in you know Chinese, and everybody can work together, help each other, and then at the end of the day they produce Python right code, so so that works right if you have a community you know, who are uh, the members who feel more comfortable speaking in certain language, you can still do the open source work, open stack work together, and then write code, and then, you know, have people helping out each other, and then, you know, generate code and be productive. I think that's also an option, have a regional event, you know, where people can speak their own language. I think um, that's an option too. That's just my opinion. Uh, something else I think that's been hanging around uh, as an idea in the, the community for a while is to improve, um, I guess, the 
I, I don't like the word, but to improve the, the sort of onboarding documentation that, that, that's, that's um, part of the various OpenSAC websites, the, yeah. the information on um, how to contribute effectively, that's the sort of general look across, across all projects and specific information about particular projects, it tends to be, well, it's not consistently organised. If it's organised at all, it can be hard to find. Um, and uh, I think uh, some effort has gone into trying to resolve that, but it hasn't been really a priority with the with um, the community, and obviously so, right. because um, you know documentation is never a developer's favourite job, right? So um, it's it's difficult to try and solve that problem. But I think um, putting more effort into um, making that you know, probably purely technical information available in a consistent way and, and to make it easy to find for new contributors, mm -hmm. um, you know, would, would definitely be a, a helpful thing to, maybe not to, to just to ease that, uh, there's enough barriers to, for, for enough pain for a new contributor to go through. Um, not being able to find stuff really ought not to be one of them. It's, you know, you have to overcome all these other barriers of time zone and language and culture. Mm -hmm. You don't need the raw information to be hard to find as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point. Um, translation, um, you know, I will. I think a lot of uh, solutions fall onto the burden of the vendor, uh, the companies, right? Because the companies want to empower their developers to be more effective working in the open set community. So the companies can actually come up with some of the initiatives. For example, translations. I think if the vendors outside of U.S. can contribute to the translation work, then their you know, members can benefit from translated documents. And I think that's gonna be a lot easy, easier for the new members to you know, onboard and um, to be more integrated into the OpenStack community. And um, I do have a question though. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, translation is boring, it doesn't count towards anything. And um, does anybody have any answer on whether translation can be counted as line of code? You know, so they can, the translation work can be recognized? Does anybody know that answer? I think that question came up about two or three summits ago. Yeah. And I believe um, you do get ATC status. Good. For, for doing translation work. I remember seeing a, a presentation at the board meeting on uh, Monday where from, from Deutsche Telekom and, and they were a big contributor to right. tra translations. I don't know if Huawei does the same thing too, but, but I think that's, that's an important thing for, um, you know, for the, for the companies that have a lot more resources yeah. um, to, to, uh, to localise as much as possible so that their, um, their staff and their, and their customers and, and the whole ecosystem in the area um, uh, has access to, to native language uh, documentation. Yeah, that, that's a good point. All right, anybody else? Um, well, maybe I think the solution is kind of like for the language is kind of hard, but uh, I think that uh, what we're going to do is to minimize the, the, like the barriers or the disadvantage to uh, the, the language, bring that to us. Like we can sh uh, set up the, uh, the, the channels just just during just between the local groups and we can find some you know like the interface to the global uh, community and it, uh, people can turn to the interface all the people all the core members all the PTLs in the local uh, local group and they, they can ask or turn help to the global uh, people uh, so I think it's kind of like solution uh, and this is what we do in China we have uh, the WeChat groups, we have like 500 people in the group. We can ask questions really easy and to respond, the people can respond quite mm -hmm. fast. Like uh, you, you're talking to the, the, you know, WhatsApp, I don't know. Uh, maybe the WhatsApp or the Facebook uh, groups. It's, yeah. uh, it's easier for us to communicate in the uh, local groups. So maybe we can try to uh, summarize the questions or the needs all the requirements to the global and yeah. refl reflect to the global. That, that's a very good point too. Um, you know, I'm on Chinese WeChat too. It's funny, it's, I mean, people are really enthusiastic about OpenStack. So sometimes we see, you know, if there's an, any analyst report about, you know, technology OpenStack, pretty much within a few hours, you see a translated version of the article on WeChat. And um, I think that's just so helpful you know, um, to, for the community to learn together 
And um, the WeChat, I, I'm not saying you know you also use WeChat, but I find it very effective. You have WeChat groups, and then you know um, people share information in their own language that they feel comfortable with. And um, this is a really good way to pick up new information. Yeah. Anything else? <coughs> Our most simple solution for us is sending an engineer to US. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, another solution. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the fact that I, I will send one in Niger to the right. Silicon Valley, to the, he's becoming the PTL now. Yeah. So that, is, uh, so that PTL worker is a very so tight It's like the bridge sure. thing that I was talking about, right? You have people who are closer to the new community mm, who can yeah. communicate better, and they become the bridge between mm. the, you know, the US community or the main you know, yeah. stream community and your regional community. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, so some uh, from from us are one carrier pass to go into the US is a one carrier carrier pass to yeah. become the uh, significant engineers contributors uh, to become in U to, to in the stay in the US mm -hmm. <laughs> and th that 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 can can be uh, cannot be uh, uh, acceptable for us all engineers are going to the US so right. or we have to uh, create in some uh, some something like a, so s star engineer or that that. Mm -hmm. The, and the creating this uh, engineering park, and uh, they are uh, um, becoming the mentor for newcomers, engineers, new, newcomer engineers. So oh, they are uh, consulting with us, consulting with the newcomers, and some um, advising, mentoring. Mm -hmm. There is very uh, some, some that if that is worked well, the, mm -hmm. uh, outside the US is not a very big problem. Right. Okay. Any other solution? If not, we're gonna move to the next topic. So next area that you know we need to find solution for. The next one is tool, right? Um, IRC, a lot of people feel it's very challenging, especially um, sometimes people can't type that fast, right? Or on the phone. And, um, and then also I noticed that you know people use acronyms they feel comfortable with a lot of times for people who are new to the community or outside of US probably don't understand those acronyms and then they get discouraged and then they just stay silent or the most they do is plus one, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, what would be a good solution? Um, I know the reason we st stick to that tool is because it has a good recording of the communication. So for people who miss the meeting or, or wanted to remember something, they can always go back to the recording, but, um, so, is there any other alternative? I think it's a matter of um, choosing the right tool for the right type of communication. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, the instant messaging, as you know, sort of conceptually, does work, obviously. But um, yeah, I think it, it, it it's. It really works best amongst people who already know each other. Yeah. Um, I know I found that um, communicating with people uh, as, as part of working groups over IRC is okay. It's a little slow, but it's okay. You know, once you meet someone, say at the summit or something, you understand a little bit more about them. Um, you you can communicate quite effectively using IRC. But it's difficult coming in cold. I think to. Um, to understand new people, uh, and for new people to understand what sort of what's going on, because they don't they don't know all the players. Um, but having said that, yeah, I mean there are important requirements around um, about, around recording and around making it uh, the communication tool available on all platforms. Um, mm -hmm. That that sort of uh, have driven us back to IRC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that I topic. I, I, I don't know that there's a, a really good solution because. Um, uh, because you're trying to solve a number of problems at once. There's there's language problems. There's um, documentation. Documentation and 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 you know trying to get more done. I think is going to be very difficult with one tool. Yeah. Does anybody have uh, any solution? If if you don't like IRC, is there any other alternative that you'd like to suggest to the community? Are they easier to use, more user friendly? Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, I know for some like product work groups, um, sometimes we just set up conference calls, you know, and um, the challenge is who's paying for the call, <laughs> right? So sometimes some companies say, oh yeah, I use my company, you know, bridge, you guys can all die in. But um, that, you know, that made it a lot easier. Conference calls, there is a hosted master server which acts as a PX and you can make SIP calls to it, which is nice because then you're not making like a long distance or international phone call. You can also, there is a US number if you want, if it's just easier to dial a phone number, you can do that, um, but it's also accessible via SIP. And if you search for conferencing on the wiki, you should get all of the connection details there that's for that. That's good to know. Okay, that's really great. All right, thank you. That was a good information. Um, all right, any other solution for tools? And another thing I want to bring up is, in China, we don't have access to Google. <laughs> and, and so we can use Google Doc. <laughs> and, you know, and it just, if we want to talk about diversity, then we have to be conscientious about each region's restrictions and limitations. So, um, so just want everybody to know that. And we can use Facebook and no YouTube either, but you can use WeChat. <laughs> Uh, actually, I think uh, Slack is a good solution for the tools because uh, actually we use the Slack for the community. Uh, community. It, uh, you can send the pictures, the IRC count, and we can uh, send the PR or the issues to the to the channels, to different channels. And it, uh, it's, I think it's easier to use the Slack on the on the mm -hmm. web or on the mobile apps, uh, but uh, it it's a little bit slow in China to use it, to the no notification and all the loading things. Yeah, yeah. you can try that. Okay. All right, the next area that I want to tackle is the um, time zone, right? Because a lot of meetings are happening during the US more, you know, kind of comfortable time zone. And so there's no way we can expect all the developers to die in two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, especially on a regular basis. So what would be a good suggestion or, you know, alternative? So I've been tackling this problem for uh, years now. I've managed people in everywhere from uh, Brazil and Hawaii to Czech Republic and Israel. Um, and it's painful, right? It mm -hmm. is painful. And, and the only good solution I'm, I'm familiar with is to share the pain, right? So uh, basically, Sometimes you will have to uh, get on a call very early in the morning or very late at night, but as long as you don't do it on a regular basis. So um, you alternate between US comfortable time, China comfortable mm -hmm. time, et cetera, right? So uh, if you're conscientious of the problem and, and you have enough contributors from around the world, then in order to keep them, you have to share the pain. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, so I like to, that you know that's a good insight and um, I always also like to share um, at the enterprise work group um, they actually do um, they shift the you know meeting time so every other week they meet um, around US favorable time and then the other time they meet around like they pack favorable time so so that's an option you know that would make people feel like they're being included they're being you know kind of considered as part of the community so if work groups or projects, if they can consider that, I think that would be really good. And the last one, since we don't have a lot of time left, so one minute, um, I'd like to address the culture issue. Like, I guess you can change, you know, people's personality. Some people are shy and some people are more outspoken. But is there any other solution that, you know, you think that, um, you know, how we address the culture issue so people can feel more comfortable working in the OpenStack community? This one is really tough as well, right? I mean, um, if you take a look at, uh, it's not just a cultural thing, it's also, um, uh, if you take a look at uh, Linus Torvald's comments about, uh, about women in, uh, in open source. So this is a problem that is prevalent all, uh, all over the place and many people in, in open source just say, you need thick skin, right? Uh, personally, I totally disagree with that, I think what 
we all need to do is make sure that people focus only on the technical side, not on personal comments, right? You don't, you should avoid saying this code is stupid or even worse, the, the author is stupid or things like that, right? It's just focus on the technical th points, make sure that people can communicate mm -hmm. on that if, and always try to assume that if something is wrong there, it's either you don't understand well or they did not understand you and try to rehash the issue, right? It's not, it's not that the other person is not smart enough, it's, mm -hmm. right, we need, we're miscommunicating here. Right. Rowan? And, and I, I think um, uh, it's sort of um, important for anyone who's in a, some form of leadership position within, within a working group of development team or whatever to, to um, try and draw out uh, input from, from the team members because I, mean, I think as we've said a few times, it, it's, it's quite common for some people not to, not to want to speak up. Um, and I think an important part of being a, a leader, even, even just a technical leader with no management responsibilities, um, it's important to get the best out of a technical team by by soliciting actively soliciting the input from from people, even if it is um, difficult to for for some people to do that. Yeah. Well, with that, I'd like to conclude since we're run, running out of time. I think um, you know I, I think what makes OpenStack unique, different is like we're not just about you know writing code, creating technology. I think this is also a community to help each other grow. Like we have leadership training and you know we have. Uh, mentor training and that kind of stuff. I think as a community, you know, we should um, learn to respect for one another, be sensitive to each other's situations, and this is how we can be more effective in collaborating and growing together. With that, thank you so much for your time, and um, hopefully all of you will, you know, hopefully you found some useful tips from today's panel. Thank you, and I'd like to thank the panelists. Thank you. Thank you.